So my name is Rachel Bell, and today I'm going to be discussing selecting ideal sires to both improve and reduce the U.S. equine population. Um, and just some background, so I've been around horses my whole life, and I also am on the Virginia Tech horse judging team. And most recently, I've been involved with the Block and Bridle 4-H Judging Clinic, which helps local 4-H and FFA chapters learn about horse judging. And so this is something I really um, am passionate about, and hopefully I can help you guys get the basics about horse judging today. So just a history, um, or the objective, sorry, next slide. Um, okay, so hopefully through this presentation, you guys will become familiar with the history and current events in the U.S. equine population, as well as understand the fundamentals of judging a halter class, and then finally learn how to select the most ideal stallion to breed. Just a brief history about horses, they were brought to the U.S. by Spanish explorers in the 1500s, and then once here they were used for many purposes, including transportation, labor, battle, and food, and really played a huge role in the development of our country. They still do play a huge role um, in our country today, as there are 9.2 million horses in the United States. In addition, these horses provide 460,000 full-time jobs and involve over 4.6 million Americans. Their economic impact is over $39 billion, and once the multiplier effect is included, it's over $102 billion once you include spectators and other things that are not directly related. So while they do have a really big positive impact on our economy and our people, um, there's little regulation on our breeding program, so basically anyone who has two horses can breed them. There really are um, no licenses necessary, and with horses living between 20 and 30 years now with advances in vet veterinary medicine, um, that's really led to an overabundance of horses that we really can't support this larger population. Therefore, um, a lot of these horses are either left or abandoned, especially once you have major medical issues or lameness, unsoundness issues. Um, and so a breeding place, a breeding program in place would really help benefit our equine population by improving their quality of life and the quality of our horses. Uh, and programs like this have been used in other countries, including Germany who has a really strict breeding program, um, which allows them to have the top horses, if not the top horses in the world. So some ways that we can evaluate horses that we would like to breed or reproduce um, are by looking at four characteristics of balance, structural correctness, quality and breed type, and muscling. And if we did have a breeding program, obviously we'd look at other things like pedigree and fertility, but today I'm just gonna discuss the four main ways we evaluate horses. So the first is balance. And if you guys look at your sheet, um, what you're going to do is the first line you're going to draw is from here, which is the wither, and then draw a straight line down. That's your first line you're going to draw. One for each horse? Yeah, on each horse. It doesn't have to be like perfectly straight. And then the second line you're going to draw is from the flank or the top of the hip all the way down. And so ideally we want our horse to divide equally into thirds between a third of their shoulder, their barrel, and then their hip. And then the second line we're going to draw is from again from the top of their wither and then to the top of their hip right here. So just straight across their back on all the horses. What was the second one again? <coughs> the second line is from the flank right here. And so the reason we look at this is because horses carry 60 to 65% of their weight on their forehand. And so if they run downhill, it's going to be a lot harder and take a lot more energy from both the horse and rider to rock back and carry themselves. Um, so we definitely look at this for performance, and it's the main thing we look at across all breeds, and no matter what discipline you're doing, balance plays a huge role. And so the other thing we're going to look at is a 90 degree angle to the shoulder. So again, starting at the wither, and then coming out about the center of the chest right here. And so laid back in shoulder is important because it allows greater freedom of movement out of the shoulder and allows the horse to have a longer free moving stride, which puts less wear and tear on the joints. Does anyone have any questions about that? Or they got it? Okay. So the second thing we look at is structural correctness. Um, and this is how the joints and bones fit together. Um, when looking in an actual halter class, you get to walk around the horse 360, but since we're just looking at the pictures, 
the profile of the front legs, you want to be able to draw the straight line from the shoulder down to the back of the hoof. So if you want to do that on them, and I know some of them are standing, so just do your best on that. And so some of the problems we see in the front legs is they can either be too far over or too far back, which again puts unnecessary weight and pressure on the joints and can cause lameness or unsoundness. Um, and then looking at the back legs, we have the same problem again where they can either be too far underneath themselves or too far out, which again is going to make it more difficult if the horse is too far out to drive up underneath of itself. And so what you want to do here is drop a line from the back of the hip, and it should run parallel right here to this back part of the leg. Does anyone have any questions about that? Okay, the third thing we look at is quality and breed type. So across breeds, you're looking for different things. This horse is an Arabian, and so they want more of a dish face with um, larger nostrils and a larger muzzle. Um, however, we're evaluating quarter horse stallions today, so we're going to be looking for a defined masculine jaw. Um, you want to also have refinement about the head and neck, so making sure there's no excess fat in the throat latch area um, or anywhere around the head or neck area. And then also, a large kind eye is pretty much common across all breeds. Um, this can be an indicator of trainability or attitude of the horse. So when you're looking at your card today, you just want to see if the horse is stylishly profiling, if you can see him winning your class, if he's appealing to look at. Um, and then the final thing in stock horse breeds is muscling. And so these are halter horses. They're not going to be performing anything, obviously. <laughs> they just walk and trot because they have such a huge amount of muscle, and that's what they're bred for. Um, however, because they do put so much feed into them, some of them can be fat, so the way to look at this is by looking at both the form and the gaskin, which are their front and back legs right here. And so you just want to see some expression of muscling there, and that'll indicate muscling versus fat in the horse. And then also you want to have a length of hip. So looking at the hip from where you drew your line, um, you want to have a longer hip. If you want to draw another line, you can. Um, and just looking at the muscle carries down into the lower rear quarter, so you want to see developed muscle there. Okay. So now since you guys have drawn your lines and stuff, if you want to go ahead and place this class, so you're going to keep the number with the horse so it doesn't have to be in order. It could be one, three, four, and two. So just keep the number with the horse and then give your placings. And you can also just write some positives and negatives about each of the horses. And if you have any questions, just let me know. And does anyone want to share which horse they put first? Um, number four. Okay. And then anyone want to share which one they put last? Number two. Okay. And what were the reasons you put two last? Um, everything you explained was kind of wrong in it. <laughs> so. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so if you go to the next slide. So the official placing that I placed it was four, one, three, and two. So this is a top pair and bottom class. We have the two sorrels on top. Um, <coughs> if you go to the next slide. So as you can see, the first thing we talk about is balance. These horses divide nicely into thirds. Um, they also have laid back shoulders and overall just a pure balance. They're stylishly profiling stallions. Um, they also have a higher degree of muscling than the other two horses. We can see they have more explosive form and gaskins and greater lengths of hip with muscling that carries down. Um, and then also they appear to be structurally correct, so that's why I placed them at the top. Um, four I put on top just because it's a little bit heavier muscle, um, and overall it's just more stylish <coughs> profiling. And then the bottom pair, I did three over two. 
So these Palominos are both lighter framed, lighter muscled horses. Um, and looking here, we can see they don't really divide that evenly into thirds. This one's a little bit long in the back. That could lead to some soundness or soreness issues when riding. Um, however, I did place it over the last horse today. As you said, there's a lot wrong with this. Um, if we look, if you drop your line down, it's single hopped and over at the knee. Okay, I don't know if you can go back. Okay, I can go back. Right there. Yeah, in the bottom left. Yeah. Um, and over at the knee, and as you can see, its shoulder is really upright. And so if we were to look at this horse on the move, it's probably going to have a short, choppy stride and take a lot more effort from the rider to lift its like neck up since it's really thick at the base and ties it low out of the chest. Um, and so again, the reason we judge classes is form to function. You don't want to ride a horse that's pulling on you, that's taking a lot of effort just to move forward. Um, and so just to conclude, um, with the abundance of horses in the U.S., I think it would be wise to implement a breeding program that focuses on improving the quality of life of our horses as well as the performance and trainability um, of the horses by evaluating things such as balance, structural correctness, quality, and muscling. And these are just the sources, and if you guys have any questions. There is uh, the, the term styling and profiling.